Good Friday to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to today's European Outlook. We have got uh, very mild conditions across the majority of the continent, but big changes will come as we move through next week. But before we even get to next week, we do uh, I do, do want to kind of highlight the, the mild conditions. This was uh, the maximums yesterday across much of Europe, exceptionally mild for you know the 6th of March. Uh, anywhere from the UK, uh, across much of France, uh, parts of Iberia, not quite as much for, for Iberia, but certainly for France anyway, and the UK, 19 Celsius yesterday at Sandton Downham in Suffolk. But uh, right the way across the continent, we've uh, got temperatures mid to high teens across the board, and uh, mm. that has led to anomalies 5 to 10 Celsius above average for this stage in March, and this uh, was the anomalies yesterday across the continent. So you can see here a very standout uh, warm anomaly showing up. But uh, we, uh, like I say, we've uh, got some very mild conditions. This is uh, a few interesting tweets here by Mills Milik, based in uh, Belgrade in Serbia, talking about the uh, big swings. Also, had obviously clear skies, light winds across. Many areas of the continent, as shown in yesterday's uh, visible satellite imagery. But uh, you can see here the big swings in terms of the temperatures between uh, you know, morning and afternoon under those very clear skies, light winds, and very dry air. Dry air obviously heats and cools quicker than uh, moist air. And you can see here that we've seen temperatures uh, go from uh, minus 5 to start off with to plus 22.4. Uh, that's a difference of 27.4. We've seen, uh, uh, I think, in Kosovo, minus 11.6 to start with. The afternoon, 18.3, a difference of 29.9. Uh, I believe this was uh, in uh, Moldova or North Macedonia. Um, I, need to, <laughs> I need to work on my, my, my flags, uh, it has to be said. But the, uh, here's a difference here, minus 6.4. Uh, uh, you know, compared to a 23.3 in the afternoon, and the uh, Skopje uh, minus 2.8, uh, and then it rose to 24.3 in the afternoon. So, very, very uh, significant swings in terms of the diurnal. Uh, we've seen it in the southern half of the UK, even greater uh, across parts of the Balkans, and we've seen afternoon maximums, say, uh, into the mid 20s. Uh, in quite a few spots yesterday afternoon. So thanks to these conditions here, crystal clear skies and the uh, very dry air, allowing the uh, the cool overnight and the warm afternoon. So we are going to hold on to some uh, mild conditions over the next couple of days across the UK and Ireland. Uh, this is the upcoming five days, like I say, of the, the GFS Ensemble. But uh, if we skip back to the older run, because the new one is currently uh, loading, this is the change coming up for the UK and Ireland this year. Uh, below average, we've forced in the unusual mild uh, to the east and to the southeast of the continent here. And then even in the 11 to 15 day, you can see here that we, uh, yes, we moderate in terms of that cold anomaly, but uh, it's still holding close to the average for this time of year so we'll we'll continue to monitor this going forward but uh, nevertheless say uh, we've got the uh, plenty of uh, swings going on in terms of the weather at this moment in time we're obviously keeping a very close eye on iberia uh, we've got an area of low pressure deepening as it moves towards the northwest of the peninsula we're going to see wind rain and um, some mountain snow to speak about as well cool temperatures as a consequence of some of that cold air getting drawn all the way from greenland down over the North Atlantic and uh, underneath that area of low pressure. <clears throat> so, continuing to look at the uh, various aspects here, let me just see if uh, I've forgotten anything. I want to show you the, the La Nina situation at the moment because we've seen very strong warming take place due to the, 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 the Manjulian oscillation distorting the wind at the surface over the Pacific. We are seeing uh, temperatures significantly warm over the eastern uh, equatorial Pacific. And uh, yes, we're still holding on to that cold anomaly over the Central Pacific, but uh, interesting to see how much warming we're showing, we're seeing showing up over the eastern side of the the, the basin here. That may be an indication of a, a land, uh, an El Nino trying to develop as we progress through later in this year. Uh, but an interesting one here, quite a contrast between uh, unusual warmth versus unusual cold uh, as we cross the the Pacific itself 
I just wanted to point that out. This is the Nino Region 3 4, and you can see quite a sharp rise from around minus 1.5 back in uh, January to close to. Uh, close to neutral actually as we move uh, towards the uh, the 6th of March here that's quite a sharp rise and that is due to uh, a, a decrease in the easterlies and actually a, a picking up of the westerly winds at the surface allowing that warming to then take place so let me end today's video by looking at uh, the current charts then and uh, this is how the GFS is looking today. We looked at the ECMWF yesterday. So uh, it looks as if we are continuing to see that high building. At the moment, no high to speak about. We've got an area of low pressure to the north of the UK. We've got the other area of low pressure, a secondary low to the west of Spain and Portugal. As I'm seeing here, there's that strong area of high pressure. Centered over the Balkan region here, we're actually pulling... Uh, some slightly milder air in from the Mediterranean basin, but underneath that area of high pressure and dry air, we're seeing these big uh, diurnal changes taking place. Chilly by day uh, and that by night, and day, uh, and warm by day. Should I say? I'll get there in the end. But as we play through this uh, sequence, you can see there's that area of low pressure really winding up, driving a lot of moisture in off the Atlantic across the Iberian Peninsula. Concerns over flooding here. Uh, we've also got the potential for significant snow in high elevations of Spain, as well as, well, I was going to say Portugal. More so Spain than uh, Portugal, it has to be said. But uh, by the time we reach, say, Sunday, you can start to see the area of high pressure now developing over Iceland and just to the west of that. And what is going to happen is that is going to start to open the door to a northerly flow. We've got an area of low pressure, slack low with that moving into southern Norway. There's that area of high pressure now building into parts of southern Greenland. That is creating a channel between the low and the high. Northerly winds blowing in and uh, we are increasing the chill. This is going to be quite the weather whiplash as highlighted in yesterday's uh, title uh, as we move uh, but, you know, between yesterday and uh, you know, middle next week. Uh, we are basically going from uh, you know late spring-like conditions to uh, late winter conditions in the space of five or six days. Quite the shock to the system. Looking at the 850 temperatures, then you can see that is pretty cold air coming south. I think we're going to see temperatures in northern areas in particular struggling to get out of the low to mid single figures, as opposed to the mid to high teens that we're seeing over the course of today and yesterday. Continue to play through this loop and uh, you see here that uh, we do slightly lose that chill to an extent and we've got slightly milder conditions moving in. So this is the modeling kind of starting to kind of uh, wax and wane in terms of the overall solution of next week. And we've seen this before. We've seen it in the month of February. When, uh, that's why I'm not getting overly carried away with this uh, potential cool coming in that it's going to get locked in for a long period of time. That being said, Given what's taking place with the, the stratospheric warming and uh, the potential of uh, increased blocking over the Arctic region, uh, slowing down of the westerly momentum and uh, a south displaced jet, uh, you would expect to see uh, interesting things developing through the, the second half of March and uh, even in the month of April. But it's just too far away to kind of pinpoint anything and, and be too sure about any kind of given pattern. This is the ECMWF then. You can see playing through the loop, it's indicating some fairly cold air getting driven in. But again, the position of where these highs develop, sit, uh, remains very open to question. As you can see here, the fluctuations in the model as we move towards the, uh, you know, the, seven, the, the, the day 7 through 14 day period is, is particularly uncertain. So we'll continue to watch this space. Day off tomorrow, but uh, please stick around. I'm I'll be back at 4 p.m. Sunday with the Global Weather Report live from Marvel and Weather HQ in Edmonton. So I hope you can stay tuned for that. Lots going on. Keep it right here. Bye for now.